Hello, and welcome to the 6.5 Summit Automotive Track Session, Automotive Ethernet and the Software Defined Vehicle. I'm Olivier Blanchard, Research Director at the Futurum Group, and I am thrilled to introduce Amir Barniv, Vice President of Marketing and Automotive at Marvell Technology. And together, we're going to talk about what the automotive ethernet is and how it is transforming the automotive sector. Thanks for being here, Amir, and let's jump right in. So my first question to you is give us some quick background on Marvell and tell us a little bit also about what Marvell has been doing in the automotive space. Okay, great. So Marvell is a 29 years old fabulous semiconductor company, okay, that is uh, delivering uh, products for four main sectors of the market. It's data center, which right now is our biggest uh, market sector. It's enterprise, it's carrier, and it's automotive. And the company uh, revenue is growing very nicely since 2016, when our new CEO, Matt Murphy, joined the company. Uh, Matt, he, he's coming from the automotive world. You know, in Maxim, uh, he uh, managed many uh, automotive products, and he understood the potential of this market. And uh, uh, when he joined the company, okay, the first thing he did, one of the first things, was to hire a very experienced uh, general manager, Will Chu, and started a new business unit that is specifically targeting the automotive market. Um, over time, uh, Mike Yeager, the new GM, uh, replaced the uh, wheel. Uh, and today, uh, we are one of the fastest growing business unit in the company. Um, we have, uh, by now, uh, design wins with more than 45 OEMs, and this is including 13 out of the biggest 15 uh, OEMs. Uh, we are we get a very high uh, credibility in the market, okay? And uh, you probably heard about the latest award that we received from General Motor uh, for the supplier of the year. And uh, they chose us, you know, out of, I think they have something like 20,000 suppliers. And this is for innovation, quality, and the support that we are providing them. So a very successful business unit in a very successful and nicely growing company. Excellent. Yes, and, and congratulations, by the way. Uh, so we're seeing how auto manufacturers are adding a lot of digital features and services to their cars, um, ranging from you know seat warmers on demand to autonomous driving and cockpit, telemetry, uh, connectivity. Uh, all these systems live on the car now. And and my question to you is, what is the automotive Ethernet's role in all of this? How does it all fit? So great question. So metaphorically, uh, you can think that the Ethernet in the car is the nervous system. Okay, so there is the processors, you know, there is the sensors like camera and, you know, other sensors in the car. And Ethernet is really uh, the network that connect all of them and need to serve, uh, you know, the different applications, uh, you know, in the best way possible based on the needs based on the needs of this application. What Ethernet brings to the car is probably more than fifty years of development, okay, of this standard that started with other markets like uh, data center and enterprise. Um, it's bring new features like uh, switching, virtualization, security. A quality of service that is required in the automotive. Um, I would say that uh, one of the biggest advantage of Ethernet in the car is really related to the uh, uh, vision of Ethernet end to end. Okay, that can help to leverage software development uh, that uh, the OEM are doing for the uh, for those vehicles. Okay, I don't know if you know, but in a, a high end car today they have more than 300 million lines of code, okay? And whenever they need to change the software to move between different trims or the new models, okay, there is a lot of effort in order to change and test this software. So when everything is based on Ethernet in the car end-to-end, -end, that makes the life of the software developer much easier. And, and that's the reason, you know, that they really like the, the solution of Ethernet uh, to, be re to replace any other protocols that exist in the cars today. Right. Now that makes sense. So speaking of, of the, the, the network inside the car, how, how did the car network evolve? And uh, I guess what are the different stages it will still go through? And, and where are we uh, along that, that journey of development? 
Okay, so if you look on the car, the this the electronics in the car, the system in the car, I would say until 2015, this is what we used to call device centric. Okay, in these cars you had systems like GPS, like the radio, the CD, but each of those systems was an individual system with its own processor or controller with very small interaction between those systems. So really there was no network, real network in the car. Moving forward anywhere from 2015, okay, and I, I still until today, probably until 2025, uh, we see the, the uh, transition into what we call application-centric, okay, where we have in the car domains, each domain encapsulates many different applications under it. So for example, we have infotainment, so infotainment including the, the GPS, you know, the radio, the operating system that has been used in the car, the connection to the phones, and uh, in order to support the uh, application-centric, uh, we developed the, uh, ar- the system architecture, the network architecture that's called domain architecture. In domain architecture, for each system, it has its own controller, and then it has its agents around the cars that are connected directly to this uh, controller or, or processor. The the main issue with domain architecture is really the cable harness because now you have many, many cables that are running back and forth inside the car. And when we talk on cables, we are talking on weight, okay? I don't know if uh, people don't even realize this, but cables are the third heaviest component inside the car after the engine and the chassis. Uh, in addition, it's cost, okay, to uh, install all those cables. It's very costly, okay, you need to have an inventory, and then uh, you cannot have robots installing those cars. You have people that need to actually run those cables in the car. So it's also a matter of, of cost. Um, so the next transition that we see after 2025 is the transition from application-centric into what we call data and software-centric. And this transition also includes a change in the network inside the car, moving from domain architecture to zonal architecture. So zonal architecture means that the the OEM divide the car to geographical zones, okay, like two in the front, two in the back, you know, maybe one in the center. And in each zone, you have Ethernet switch that aggregate the traffic from all the agents of the different domain in that zone and convert it to Ethernet, high-speed Ethernet, that run on single, thin, low-cost, and, and low-weight cable, okay? And, and this is really the backbone of the car. So by moving to Zona architecture, you reduce dramatically, you know, the cables, the number of cables, and the weight of the cables in the car. But OEM also realized that solar architecture provide them more intelligent that they couldn't have before, in the network, okay, that related, for example, to central compute that was not possible with domain architecture or even to central storage. So the the Ethernet is, as you can uh, understand, is the key technology for zonal architecture. Okay, now everything is running in zonal over the back, uh, on Ethernet in the backbone. And uh, these are the products that Marvell is developing today, the switches, the FI, the bridges, to serve both the existing domain architecture, but also the future zonal architecture. That's really interesting. So you're making the uh, you're making the cars lighter, more cost effective, and more efficient, essentially. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And probably more power efficient as well, which is good. Um, so what's what's the mood been uh, with the uh, the automotive OEMs and the platform vendors? Um, and also, I guess, you know, since we're talking about markets, can you give us some, some numbers or some sense of scale or what the opportunity looks like uh, for the industry, for the automotive industry, but also for Marvell specifically? Okay. So I, I would start with the mood of the OEM for new technology. And I think today it's anywhere between uh, hot to, to burning hot. <laughs> they are really looking for more technology to add to the car. And the reason is that they want to differentiate. And I want to explain a little bit more, especially when we are talking on the tra- the mega trend right now, the transition into an electric vehicle. So if you look on what is electric vehicle, I mean, the, the basic is pretty much the same. It's battery on wheels. Okay, you have the battery, okay, and you have the wheels, the engines, okay, the electric engine that come with the battery. 
So if be, between OEM, it's very hard to differentiate. Okay, so some is differentiate on they saying, hey, we can drive longer with a single charge. Okay, the range. But this is not really a differentiation because if you want to buy a car that can drive longer on a single charge, you need to pay more. Okay, so it's more expensive batteries and, you know, expensive engines that come with it. Um, some are talking about the acceleration of the car. Hey, I can accelerate from zero to 60 mile per hour or 100 kilometer per hour, you know, in two seconds, three seconds. For most of the people, they don't care about it, okay? So now the, the OEM try to realize, okay, how can I differentiate, the, you know, from the other OEM? And they all realize that it's all going to be through the electronics and the software inside the car. A good example for this is probably the new trend that you mentioned in the beginning, the software-defined vehicle, okay, to build a car in a way that over time you can download new application, okay, and add more value to the car. And we believe that this is going to be a very successful mega trend uh, because all the stakeholders really enjoy it, okay, to start with the, the OEM. For the OEM, it's a new, new generation of revenues. After they already sold you the car, they can get more revenues. Uh, there is some estimation in the market that says that this market is going to be something in the range of $450 billion per year. So obviously, every OEM wants to take share of the of that market. For the owner of the car, it's also a very big benefit to have an SDV car because over time, they can keep the value of the car by adding more new application. Okay, So the car value is not declining as it is today. And the same for the care, you know, the carrier provider, for them, it's high bandwidth, okay, that we need in order to serve all these applications. So everyone enjoy this mega trend, and that, that's why we believe this will happen uh, very quickly. Now, you ask about the size of the market. Um, the transition to Zonar architecture means that you have many more switches with many more Ethernet ports. And that affects dramatically the growth of the shipment of Ethernet ports to automotive. And uh, uh, what we see that this market, the automotive uh, uh, Ethernet ports, is going to uh, grow in a rate, CAGR, of about 20 to 28% year to year in the next six to seven years. Uh, so just to compare, you know, to the rest of the Ethernet world, the wired Ethernet world, okay, and I'm talking data center, you know, enterprise, carrier, S&B, if you take all the ports that are shipped in do into this uh, uh, world, you know, of Ethernet uh, that is not automotive, uh, today they are higher than the automotive, okay, we are talking about a billion ports per year, but the growth is very slow, it's growing about 3% year to year. So based on our model, you know, anywhere between 2026 to 2028, the automotive uh, Ethernet world, we will, need, we will ship more ports uh, into this uh, sector than the rest, the whole world of Ethernet today, the wired Ethernet. And of course, that gets everyone very excited. Okay, very exciting because it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of revenue for many companies, good competition, a lot of innovation. And, and this is the market that we want to uh, play in, and, and uh, we are growing very fast in this market as of today. Right. Now that's that's really exciting. Those numbers are those numbers are amazing. Uh, one last quick, very quick question, because that's all we have the time for, is uh, is about AI. Talking about mega trends uh, that also impact automotive. Will Ethernet impact AI? And obviously, are we going to see AI in cars? Uh, 30 seconds, your thoughts. Okay. So first of all, AI is already used today in the car, okay, to start with autonomous cars. Okay, autonomous cars use now use the special chips to, uh, you know, for the video analysis, the what's called inference, and, and these are all done with AI. Uh, we have voice recognition that is using AI. We have uh, predictive maintenance that OEM are using today, AI, in order to improve this uh, service. So AI already exists in the car. What Ethernet enabled is to accelerate the adoption of AI into this car, all this application, by providing very high-speed, secured, with high quality of service links, okay, that are essential for the success of all these uh, new applications inside the car. Excellent. 
Well, that's all the time we have, unfortunately. So, Amir, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today and telling us about what Marvell is doing in the automotive space. And for everybody watching, thanks for your time and enjoy the rest of the sessions.